Hi. Big market changes often forecast political changes. And of course, it's also the other way around. So if you know how to read either, it can give you an edge on seeing what's coming. For example, a few weeks ago, I pointed out here that Taiwan has just been publicly warned by a fo former member of the Pentagon Policy Board to start arming its citizens to forestall Chinese invasion. This was a pretty big thing, practically an official last warning. The old Pentagon hand said, even if your microchips are the best in the world, Americans won't fight for you if you won't fight for yourselves, like the Finns and the Israelis and the Ukrainians do. This made me sit up and take notice, looking for the corresponding commercial move. And indeed, right after, Taiwan's semiconductor announced that its future expansion would take place in the US, not in Taiwan. In other words, the US, which is Taiwan's semiconductor biggest clients, now demanded that the company start emigrating its newest plants to Arizona and Texas, which of course would make TSM stock less risky. That's when I mentioned here that TSM was an interesting stock to sleuth, which by the way was 15% ago. And I was not the only one taking an interest and a notice. Warren Buffett bought a big slug of the stock too. Now, a few weeks later, the Taiwanese took the hint to heart and the, co and the corporation intended move and announced a general military draft, which made invasion even riskier for China. So TSM stock popped some more. Is it done or will TSM go any higher? Do your own sleuthing and make up your own mind. Now, the above was a clear case of a public event, an official warning leading to an official change, a military draft and a corroborating commercial change, TSM moving new plans to the US, thereby reducing the stock's risk. So what is the point of this clip? Are there any current such joint events? Yes, there are. Today, I want to point out another big change in politics, which may be presaging a big change in stocks. What is this change? Actually, there are two such, and both took place in Japan. One by the BOJ, the Bank of Japan, and the other by the Japanese government. First, the Bank of Japan. The, the BOJ has always been buying Japanese government bonds, also known as the JGBs, because Japan, as is well known, but not talked about, is a slowly dying country. Japanese men apparently do not like sex, and Japanese women apparently don't want to be housewives. So Japan's birth rate is pathetically low and the Japanese population keeps shrinking year by year. Recently, Japan's prime minister said that the country is on the brink because of its falling birth rate. But the UN estimate in a few decades, Japan population will fall by half. And with only half the population, Japan simply won't have enough working people to pay back those bonds which is why the BOJ itself has been buying them, almost 90% of them. A practice, by the way, in economics known as a self-licking ice cream. However, over the last few weeks, that amount of self-buying by the BOJ has jumped alarmingly. Every week establishing a new high. That was the first event I noted after Wall Street began to issue some alarming forecasts. I waited then for something political to signal where corresponding move could come in the market. What came, however, surprised me. What happened was the Japanese government itself announced it would double defense spending from 1% of GDP to 2%. Double. This is an enormous increase, especially with the third largest economy in the world. And it obviously has to do with standing up to China. But is this the only reason? Besides, where would Japan get the money? both to buy JGBs and double up a defense budget, let alone pay for more incentives for Japanese families to have more children. I asked some US school friends who know about such matters much more than I do, and the general feeling was that the BOJ realized that it couldn't keep up buying bonds all by itself and that it needed help. This was also the US interest because if the BOJ ever stopped buying its bonds, the bond price would plunge and so the implied interest rate would soar. This would have all sorts of bad implications to worldwide markets, 
since Japan, as I said, is the third largest economy in the world after the US and China. So most likely, Japan asked for help from the US Fed. But this, pen, this help would not come free. The Fed would help Japan stabilize its bonds, and the Japanese must help the US in its fight against China. Not that it's not helping now, but it would take this Japanese help to a totally new high level, double. Now, why is this so important? Because this practically guarantees a Japanese reflation backed by the US. In other words, money printing. Think about it. The three biggest economies in the world are the US, China, and Japan. China, the second largest economy, has just reopened the economy and it's printing money with abandon because if it wouldn't, its real estate would crumble and unemployment would soar, which would reduce Xi Jinping's low popularity even more. So that's one big avalanche of money coming in, inflation or no inflation, China. But now Japan, the third largest economy, had just effectively announced a reflation in, of its own. The extra money will be used to both expand the military and to buy JGBs with U.S. help. But what of the third economy, the biggest, the U.S. itself? There, the Fed allegedly is sucking money out of the market, also known as QT, quantitative tapering, to kick it down. Or rather, the head of the Fed, Jay Powell, does. The Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, is fighting power tooth and claw because as a good democratic operative, I'm told, she wants the market to stay up, inflation or no inflation, to prop up her friends in the administration any way she can. Who is winning? Up to night was Jay, with some rumors even that Yellen would soon be out. But these rumors have been now reversed, with Yellen becoming more powerful. In fact, in the recent bogus fight in Congress to raise the U.S. debt ceiling, Janet Yellen sounded super alarmist. And I'm told what she is really after is to fill up the TGA, the Treasury General Account, with which to fight Jerome Powell and the Fed even more clandestinely. In simple words, Jay Powell wants the U.S. market down, Janet Yellen wants it up. And the Japanese hidden reflation is, in my opinion, a totally new factor. So the real hidden story is that the Fed eventually must soon fall in line behind China and Japan, whose announcement of doubling up the defense budget is really an announcement. It is going to print more money. Because with China and Japan, both in the reflation camp, that is QE, the Fed, which is in a deflation camp, still QT, must surely follow soon and reverse course. It simply couldn't avoid it. Bottom line, in my opinion, the above makes it more likely that the stock market would surprise everyone on the upside as the avalanche of new money coming for the biggest economies in the world sooner or later spill into stock. Can I be wrong? Of course I could be. So do you own through thing? Ask any friends you have with contacts in the U.S. Congress, preferably mid-level. There are few things as valuable as opinion of mid-level people, either in companies or in elected office, who have to pay the mortgage and orthodontist bills by smelling which way the wind is really blowing. Yes, indeed, you can sleuth politics just as you can sleuth the market, because eventually both are often connected. That's all for today. Let me know in the comment below what you think of the above. And if you like it, give it a like and subscribe and tell all your friends who they subscribe to. Then buy my book, The Sleuth Investor. Give it a good review if you can. And finally, buy my next book, The Advanced Sleuth Investor, coming up in less than two months. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.